those who have obtained like precious faith. Give all diligence. I ask my own heart, I ask your heart, what progress have I made? How far have I moved in the things of God? It's a wonderful thing to be saved, but you know, it's possible to be saved by grace and not saved from disgrace. It's possible to have your soul saved and to have your life lost for God. The true moral strength comes by righteous living. The fact is that we're not like a car that gets a, a gallon or two of gasoline and then go on it for a while. We're like the old trolley cars with the, the line up to the electricity. And as soon as we break from that electricity, we may roll for a while, but we're out of juice. We're going to stop. What weakens a Christian is compromise in the life. And after a little while, we get used to it, you see. And we say, well, it's not as bad as doing something else. What's wrong with it? The question is not, what's wrong with it? The question is, what's right with it? What's good about it? Oh, let's go on for God. A thousand years from now, it's the only thing that will matter. As a young man, I was at a, at a conference, and there was a speaker there, and I don't remember another thing he said, but his closing statement, wouldn't it be a terrible thing if when you got to heaven, you discovered that everything you had done on earth could have been done by someone who wasn't even saved at all? Boy, that shook me up. I'm not a baseball player, but every once in a while the fellows go up and knock the ball around, you know. And uh, I was out in center field this time. It was the last game of the season. And uh, we were uh, up by two runs, and there were two men on base, and there was a heavy hitter up to bat, and I knew the ball was coming to me. <laughs> and if I caught that ball, we'd win, and if I dropped it, we'd lose. And sure enough, I saw that ball coming. And I started to run for the ball, and I like to think that my foot went into a hole ball sort of hit me on the head instead of in the glove. They just all quietly walked over and picked up their stuff and headed for the cars. And I wish somebody had yelled at me or said something, but nobody said anything. You know, someday when we stand before the Lord Jesus, he's not going to yell at us. But what can he say? He's given us life and health and soundness of mind. He's given us gift and opportunity. He has given us divine promises. He has given us divine power. He has given us the divine nature. Let's go on for God. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ.